jump right into it. I'm excited. Um, first of all, before we get into the episode proper, uh, and obviously we're gonna say hello to everybody, but did everybody get the link to that government, f like, the, it was a chili? Uh, we got, I got tweeted about it, emailed about it, it was insane, but apparently, uh, chili found what they believe to be Yeti footprints? Indian, Indian army, that's what it is right here. Uh, NBC News, so it's not coming from, like, the Daily Mail. Let me link you guys. And this is all going on the podcast. People are listening right now. I'm going to put it in the Zoom chat so you okay. guys can grab it. There it is. It okay. says, the title of the of the article is, Indian Army says it found Yeti footprints in the Himalayas. Mount Maka Makalu is the world's fifth highest mountain and is located about 12 miles south of Mount Everest. There's just no way. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm looking at the, the picture, obviously, that they that they have up here. Uh, the article just says that they're measuring 32 inches by 15 inches. Uh, the footprints were found near Mount Makalu Base Camp ap on April 9th, so only a few weeks ago. Military officials posted on Twitter uh, about it on late that Monday. And a spokesman for the country's defense ministry told NBC News on Tuesday that photographs taken by the Army's mountaineering expedition team had been passed on to the scientific community for verification. The announcement, which referred to the Yeti as a, quote, mythical beast, was met with mixed reaction <laughs> online. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> the best the best quote is at the end. Uh, where, yeah, let me just skip right out because this is kind of a longer uh, article. You can't kill a legend with anything as mundane as facts, is the end quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this seems believable. <laughs> if you look at the picture of the footprints, it just looks like somebody walked, like, really weirdly because it's just one footprint directly in front of another it's like a single file uh track of prints it doesn't look like they're walking like a bipedal creature it just looks like somebody was walking like just like a model yeah like a model would on a runway yeah exactly yeah it's Hilarious. very strange what do you think jesse are you convinced i've been studying this photo <laughs> all my life i've been studying this one photo i can't like it is a bizarre photo in that you're right that the footprints are that of someone purposefully walking one foot in front of the other. Yeah. Or like a dude in like one snowshoe hopping. <laughs> he's just hopping. Oh. But he's got, man, he's got real good coordination if he's single foot hopping that straight. Yeah. We also have no size context. That means he would do great in Chinese hell. The hopping, yeah, that's true. He would, he would body that part. Yeah. In, in the photo, we don't know how big the photo is. There's nothing to size. No, all it says is uh, that measuring 32 inches by 15 inches. That's it. Yeah, like the photo offers us nothing, though. There's nothing to compare it to. No, nothing. There are it's twigs just, no. and what appears to be small trees. Yep. But how big are those trees? What are – like there's nothing Maybe to they're mini trees. To. Maybe they're – maybe they make it even look smaller than it is. Maybe it's even bigger than we think. It's possible. It's like I just don't know. It's it's a, just a bad photo and a, like, can, just a terrible Jesse, article. Jesse, you can't kill a legend. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that was something so mundane. <laughs> Not with something as mundane as, as a facts. picture. <laughs> as facts. Yeah. How mundane of you. <laughs> well, uh, that'll, that's our opening. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Chuliminati podcast. Uh, this is going to be the, another Alex episode. So, as always, my pants are strapped. The crazy pants Why are firmly strapped. Why do we allow him to do this? What because you we... like it, there's, first of all. There's a portion you of like our, it. There's a portion of our audience who clamors Alex insanity. So, we might as well yeah. give them what they want. Uh, they are and I do good. I do it right. You do you do guys, it right. I, I'm not saying you don't. The 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 subject matter may not be as legitimate <laughs> <laughs> as aliens. Obviously, not all the time, but I do I do put in the work. Let me. You know what? I forgot that I put a cup of coffee on. Let me just go grab it. And While you're we going to get, get a cup of coffee, we can chill our hoodie that is only available oh, yes. for two more weeks. Do it from today, from the launching of this episode. You got two more weeks. Go get a hoodie at the uh, the the Yeti. It's a limited time run. It's dope as hell looking. Uh, it's super cool. So go get it. We'll be. Uh, I'll be rocking that at uh, the England thing. Nice. Hell yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Here he comes. He's got the coffee. He's sitting down. Carefully placing his hot cup of joe on the desk. Oh, boy. And he's returned to I us. Don't, everything about this is upsetting. Which part? The coffee part? Just the Alex part. <laughs> the part that I fell asleep right before this. Is that what <laughs> yeah. you guys so are talking about? He was so thrilled. With the, I was so was hyped like, to get ready, started. Guys, I'm ready, guys. I'm ready to record. <laughs> and then the next thing we hear, he's like, oh, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you you left me the perfect amount of time to fall asleep. Which you was gave under me like, an hour. Under an hour. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I was just, I was like, it was too little amount of time to like start something. So I just sort of like sat there and just like slowly faded away, you know? <laughs> just like I you just, are on camera right now. Yeah, I don't know what's <laughs> going you on. Keep going I don't know like why dark, they're... blurry, bright. I'm just sitting in the worst possible spot. I, I'm I'm running a Mickey Mouse operation here, no, guys. Yeah, this yeah. Is, this People is are crazy. always like, why don't you do cameras? It's like, well, one, we're a podcast, but two. I live under an easy up underneath the freeway. It's not easy. Well, Alex, uh, we shield our we shield our hood <coughs> our hoodie. Take us into Crazy Town. Sell Shit us Illuminati. on whatever it is you've got us. All right. So this week, while I'm still committed to the idea of convincing physical evidence, which did really well last time, this doesn't time, bode thought, well to start. If you're already ditching the idea of physical evidence, no, no, no. I'm still committed to it. Okay, okay. But okay. I wanted I wanted to bring you something uh, totally different than what I brought last time. But I only slightly succeeded because if I really think about it, this is now my third, count it, third mystery having to do with music. So that's not something that I planned. We found also your niche, I, man. We found your niche. I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't seek it out. Okay. But I don't care. It's fine. Because after reading this article on Stereo Gum uh, that came out like last year, uh, just like this dude, Michael Nelson, who wrote the article, I fell down an insane rabbit hole of like musicians with weird mysteries around them. And the most common mystery with musicians always is that somewhere along the line in their careers, you guys have probably heard a couple like this where somewhere along in their career, they die or they have to go away for some reason. And then they're replaced with like a clone or a lookalike or sorry, that what? type of thing. Like, I'm sorry, we've heard of this before? I, yeah, okay. Like I okay, for example, have heard of this before. Huge I'm huge sorry, huge what? famous one. Huge famous one, Paul McCartney. Yeah, Paul McCartney died. Rumored in the to 60s. have had a fight. Yeah, he was going to have a, he had a fight with the Beatles. He drove off in a car in like 1967. He got decapitated, replaced by a look like Turn Me On, Turn Me On, uh was it Turn Me On Dead Man? Turn Me On Dead yeah, Man. Yeah, a lot of and the songs the whole supposedly thing. hints and clues that it's not the real Paul, Paul McCartney. That, yeah, they say his name's Billy Shears. They say, like, he had no shoes on in the Abbey Road picture to, like, demonstrate that he's, like, a... Different. Like, a yeah, like a like an angel or something. I don't know. It, it, it's not a great theory, but it, it, it's, it's famous. It's, it's, a very it's been around famous. forever. Yeah. And then the other one that's, like, the modern-day version of that is the Avril Lavigne one, where apparently <laughs> Avril Lavigne died in 2003, and then her friend Melissa Vandella replaced her. For some reason, everybody loves the full name Melissa Vandella in that story. <laughs> just keep just write it out the full every but time. But even then, even though in both of those stories, like everything is really circumstantial, like especially in the Avril Lavigne one, it's just like they look so fucking similar. Like that's the whole theory. And then the worst one is the one where Katy Perry is supposedly the hot like adult version of murdered child model John Benet Ramsey. Wait, what? Stop. I haven't heard that one. Stop. That was th Stop that video went this. viral. It's no. not a good one. The guy who made it is like not. No way. Yeah, I he's not say. committed. He's not committed to good journalism. <laughs> let's say that. Not like our but Alex. He, he was saying like her parents faked her death to, so that she could become a star, which like doesn't even really make sense to me. I don't know why you need to die before you can become famous. Dude, I listened. to uh, There was like a, a huge like John Benet Ramsey thing. I, I watched. Uh, last year, I think, and e even after like their like huge multi-parter at the end, they were they were just they still couldn't give like a full like we don't we don't like, nobody, nobody knows, who did knows. It. nobody knows yeah. who did it. All we know for sure is that she did die. Yeah, and that is, but that's the thing, right? That's how mysteries always end up is mm -hmm. that nobody really knows. And just like, just like today, where again we're gonna end up in a place where nobody really knows. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take you down a, I'm gonna take you down a path. I'm looking at both of you guys because I think you guys both are going to be pleasantly surprised by how convincing this is, okay? Okay. So I found this article on Stereo Gum. I discovered that even though it's by no means a very popular theory compared to these other theories, right? There does seem to be some question in the music world as to whether the person that we currently know as cult pop punk philosopher Andrew W.K., has always been the person that we know as cult pop punk philosopher Andrew WK. And trust me, it only gets weirder. Have you guys have you guys heard of this? I know Jesse, you saw Andrew WK pretty recently, right? Yes. I have not heard of this. Yeah. Like you guys know who he is, right? Basically. 
I actually don't. <laughs> you don't know who the Andrew WK is? Uh, let me no, like it up. You do. He's like the party guy. guy. You know the yeah. one song that everyone knows Andrew WK for? He always That's just it. talks about partying all the time, like on Twitter and stuff. He's like, doesn't matter. He's just like this like I see rock a picture of him right here. Yeah, he has the the album with where his he's got blood on his face. Yeah, uh, I see he's that. like when I it's time that. to party, we will party hard. That yeah. song. No, nope, yeah. don't I have no idea. God, what? No. You well, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Party he's hard not, is a he... 2001 song. Yeah, it's yeah, it's I'm 20 old, years old. So you know what I was doing? I was listening to freaking Lincoln Park in 2001. But you saw him, you you saw him recently, right? At the what's it called? Rage. What's the uh, game? Yeah, the Rage Two Showcase at Bethesda. They had. Andrew WK come out and sing a thing and they did it to a bunch of like media professionals and they were like we don't know what to do right now <laughs> but I had a great time so yeah he's he's tight he's a cool he's a cool performer but it doesn't matter that's not the point are the you point saying is that not... he's dead I'm not sure where you're going with this no okay I'm just gonna look admittedly a lot of this work was already done by that dude over at Stereo Gum right and I'll give you guys a link to that in the show notes there's also some extra info that I got from a site that is Unfortunately called truth about Andrew WK dot blogspot dot com. <laughs> that's, you know, that's well, it just it helps hide, you, hide the facts, man. You, you'll see. You'll see why it's like kind of an acceptable source as we get into this. But. But also uh, there's going to be some other places that I got info from, but from but I'll give you links as we go through. You'll, you'll it'll be fine. You guys you guys will be OK. I'll, I'll give you guys links if you need them. Uh, but where do we begin with this? Where do we begin with the crazy story of Andrew? I don't WK? know where we're. I don't know where we've been. Yeah, what, I'm ready, man. I have no idea what's okay, happening. Okay, let's start with. You know what? It begins, and it actually, it starts and begins with his name, Andrew W. K., which, according to most people, is short for Andrew Wilkes Cryer. Okay, uh, just a normal name. He just shortened it to Andrew W. K. because it's like cool or punk or something, right? You can sell it more. But even before this like weird like identity mystery we're about to get into, he was always trying to like mix up what the WK stood for. And like in early bios, he like floated out the info that he was named after this Michigan serial killer called Andrew Stevenson, who was the white killer. And that was like WK. And then he said that it stood for wild kid or want kicks or women come, but with a K for... It's not good, but it's it's all on his real website. It's real stuff. And I just wanted to, like, show you that even early in his career, he was trying to, like, obscure his identity a little bit. Okay. okay. Uh, but uh, other than a little bit of weirdness that he did when he was younger, he started using that name when he moved to New York. He kind of looks uh, like Roman Reigns. He really does kind of look like <laughs> a, like, kind of, like, metal version of Roman Reigns. A little bit. Yeah. Less Scorpion King, more, mm, like, mm -hmm. 70s garage rock. Um. Mm -hmm. But he, he started putting out music under that name in New York. He made friends with people uh, in the scene. He was buddies with Dave Grohl. And eventually that led him to his first UK show, uh, which was maybe like his fourth show ever, uh, which was at a place called The Garage in London. It was a pretty normal show, but there was a review of it in The Guardian. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a quote from it really quick. Okay. One music biz conspiracy theory currently circulating suggests that Andrew W.K. is an elaborate hoax devised by former Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl. Which, like, if you take it out of context and you're, like, giving this guy the benefit of the doubt, like, it kind of just sounds like maybe he's being, like, a really, like, pessimistic hipster of music and just kind of, like, being, like, he's, like, a ripoff of Dave Grohl or something, right? Is he saying, well, like, sounds, Dave Grohl... It sounds like he's saying he's so bad that this is, like, a joke Dave Grohl's putting on people. Right. That's but what it then, sounds like. Yeah, exactly. But then the dude who made the, wrote the article found this other quote in the BBC... The BBC, the real BBC, published this quote, which is, The rumor is that Andrew W.K. is a none-too-elaborate joke foisted upon the world by ex-Nirvana drummer and Foo Fighter Dave Grohl. Gossip hounds reckon Grohl penned the W.K. anthems for a laugh and got Andrew, the long-haired sex god, to front them. So, everybody's saying Grohl is just trolling the world with him? This was this was the Back first then? thing, yeah. Yeah, like, it was like a, like a, like a, some sort of, like, fake music thing some other bands have done this like i like green day did a, an album as the network one time come where on man like, obviously the jonas brothers by disney yeah exactly i mean like it's it's all it's all a thing the monkeys but this is like this is almost like what the hell? 
<laughs> this is almost like a like a like they're trying to make it seem like it's not that like it's like a social experiment or something, right? Okay. No, they're definitely being snarky Brits. Like, keep in mind, these are Brits and they're being snarky and their snark is we didn't like it. We didn't like it so much that it clearly must be something Dave Grohl's doing to the rest of the world because it's that bad. At it's this what point, they're saying at this point in this story, perfectly acceptable understanding of events so far, I would say. But. Right after this was when his album I Get Wet dropped, which is the one that is the famous one where he's bleeding from the nose on the cover that everybody's seen, I think. Like, if you know who Andrew WK is, this is the one image you probably think of when you think of him. Uh, it got really popular, and the songs that came off of it that became, like, hits were called Party Hard, It's yep. Time to Party, yep. and Party Till You Puke. Yes. And, and, it, and this is where, like, immediately when this album came out and he got, like, super famous... He immediately like adopted the like sp spirit animal of parties, sort of like <laughs> he became the Gronkowski of music in two thousand one. Yes, yeah, yeah. Literally, like that's his gimmick. Like I like Jesse, you know him, right? Like he's like just his tweets are just like the only kind of good party is a party. It's like I don't know, like it's just like <laughs> but but he also does like weird things where it's like when you go out and party and you get really drunk, remember bring a buddy so they can get you home safe. Yeah, it's like like responsible partying. We all yeah. want our rock stars to really push yeah. responsible partying. Now, keep in mind, I only know of him in that I saw him once during a Bethesda event, <laughs> and I see him on Twitter, and I was alive when his songs came out. That's it. That's, That's, That's all you need knowledge. to know. You don't. This isn't. This this doesn't require deep knowledge of his catalog. Yeah, I but was too young, if you're, basically, I was like. But 13. if you do, yeah. But like, that's the thing that's weird. Is like the whole brand that he has is this like positive party brand thing that he does he like has this gimmick of being that guy but if you actually look at the lyrics of the songs uh like there's a song on that album called ready to die that's like a bop too it's like they're all just like up-tempo bops but like the lyrics are like this is your time to pay this is your judgment day we made a sacrifice and now we get to take your life it's weird like he was like he has this image of being this like positive thing and then all the lyrics are dark like there's a song called i love new york city uh, and a lot of reviews are saying like, oh, it's like an anthem for New York City. You know what I mean? Like, a, like, yeah, this is our city kind of song, right? But the actual lyrics are broken face, burning beds, dealing off some for living while dead. Or like, we are a corporation. We are a company. We cut hard, but we're cutting hard anyway. We are your mother, father. We are your final friend. It never started and it won't end. Like, it doesn't sound like the dude is like trying to put out yeah, this that doesn't message. sound the greatest sell yeah. in new york city yeah but, but the also point, but this was 2001 and it's been 18 years and his his attitude i imagine in 2001 he was like f the world everything sucks and then the party image turned into hey be safe when you party as he aged up <laughs> i don't think that because there was no twitter in 2001 so That's to true. say that we have evidence of him saying these things is a fallacy well, get ready. So, the, well, the, the reason the reason this matters the reason this matters is because it okay. reinforces the fact that he's sending these mixed messages like all the time. On the surface, he like does this thing about being this party guy, being positive, being a good guy. But like, he seems like maybe he's really sad also, like by his lyrics. And it's like a really <coughs> weird rabbit hole we're about to go down. Like, I want to prepare you for something that's like pretty strange. But like, the guy I was reading this article on Stereo Gum. And it's like this dude <coughs> went crazy by reading this. I like like by finding this out, I think he went a little bit crazy. But like that's like kind of the fun part of the article too. Like if you end up reading it, that is that is he kind of acts kind of nutty, but like I don't know, it does make sense. Um like he uses like metal imagery and he like does all this stuff, but he like makes it about being good. I don't know. It's just an interesting thing to note that we should note before we get into it. But by the time his second album came out, it's called The Wolf and he was like super popular. He was on MTV. He played 500 shows in two years. Jesus. He wrote a jingle for Kit Kat bars. Uh, but then all of a sudden, in near the end of 2004, something super weird happened that nobody knows what it is. Something big in his life, which brings us to the main body of this episode, which we're now going to call, according to myself, the genius, we're going to call it the timeline. And I want to I want to I want to call it the timeline, Jesse, because it is 100 percent supported by actual facts. Are you ready for this? 
I don't. I'm already don't. I already don't believe any of this. <laughs> I already, I'm, I'm already ready, out, dude. but I'm in. You have, I'm you have no in. idea where we're about to go. You have no idea. <laughs> the most, the single most notorious event, and this is going to be a two part episode, by the way. This is this was too long for one episode. This is There's Andrew so WK much. Part one. Yeah, the whole. I know begins. what. How does this deserve yep. two parts? Okay, oh, I got talked into two parts. <laughs> Get ready. WK? Get no, ready. Man, it was a surprise. Oh surprise, Jesse. I don't. How the Get hell? Get ready. Get ready. Probably the single most notorious event in this whole mystery happened in Elizabeth, New Jersey, on December seventeenth, two thousand four. This is like the kickoff of December this 17th, whole. Seventeenth, two thousand four. All right. Yeah. I was. I was a freshman in high school. Uh, God, the locker, you're you're the close. locker. Was, I was four foot eleven. The locker was on the top, and I couldn't see the combo, uh, and I was being picked on. So I'm, I'm just got to put myself back in that headspace. All right, you're I'm there. Crying, I'm crying. I'm good. Let's go. He was in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, his set got cut short by a curfew because he was at the WSOU Holiday Bash, which was like a campus radio station type show. But a rumor started circulating that the dude that everybody watched play that night was not the real Andrew W.K., and that instead it was some kind of bizarre lookalike to the, to the point that, like, over the next few days, it got so serious that hundreds of people started calling into the radio station asking about it. And maybe this is why it got popular in the first place, but immediately the program director of the station, like, super denied that this was possible because he was like, I was there, it looked like Andrew W.K. to me, but it was just super weird. It was like... A weird vibe. He was super overly like defensive about it, and that could be what kicked this whole thing off. But it's barely the 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 beginning of this. So that happened. Calls were flooding into this radio station. Eventually, it becomes such a thing that uh, by two days later, uh, somebody called Christine Williams, who is the webmaster of Andrew WK's official site at the time, which does not exist anymore. It was called awkworld.com. Awkworld. Which well, was like, I, I, my brain was like awkward sweet yeah uh it, she actually addressed the rumor in an online q a so i'm going to read you a little bit of that q a so i'm going to read two questions the first one q hey a lot of people don't seem to think that was that was andrew wk at the new jersey show i am one of them what is going on christine answer to answer all of your questions there's been a lot of confusion regarding this new jersey concert people have been especially curious about where andrew went after the show and whether or not it was in fact Andrew himself on the stage. Well, please let me be the first to tell you that you can all take a deep breath and relax. Please calm down. It was a spe spectacular concert. Everything went over very well, and the night was a success. We should all feel great about the show. Many of you did mention some strange unexplained moments during the evening, mainly due to the stopping of the show early, before the band could finish the intended set, and how Andrew was moving. This was due to a small problem with people in the backstage. Everything was taken care of smoothly, and everybody made it out of one piece. At the end of the show, we moved at the same time as they worked with the equipment and finished it up perfectly. We just want people to know that it went over very well. At this point, all we can do is look at the information we've been collecting and continue with our research into the facts. We will not respond to false accusations, nor will we be threatened by those who choose deception over fairness. I'm never disappointed with a good Andrew W.K. show. Okay. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but she did not say in that response that Andrew WK was not a fake at that show. She just said a bunch of like weird shit. And then at the end, she said this weird thing. But the other question that is in this Q&A that is significant is even weirder. Question goes, yo, Christine, where the heck is Andrew? We don't want to hear from you. We want to hear from Mr. WK himself. Bring back Andrew WK. She says, I must admit, I feel slightly uneasy trying to explain to you where Andrew is, and let me also state for the record that I am in no way trying to fill in for Andrew. I'm simply here to answer questions, one at a time, on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Tonight will be the last Andrew KW concert of 2004. Good old we Andrew trust, KW. Yeah. We trust that the fans will come out in full force and raise the bar higher than ever. This is our last chance to build a night of never-ending excitement. Sold out in New Jersey. I wish I could be there. As Andrew himself has stated... He will always be there. You just might not see him. Assumptions are once again at the mercy of possibility. Standards are suddenly stripped and elevated. Precepts and formalities no longer conceal the limitless possibility that there's al that's always been there, and no longer will anticipated procedures shatter expectations or limit the endless variations of outcome that can be experienced now. 
Things which have become familiar are now anom anomalous. Due to the current circumstances, we still don't know who's causing this. We do have very clear ideas how to continue our research. You must know that Andrew is not moving away because he's already gone, which means he's actually closer to you than ever before. Remember, no sign is a good sign, and that still remains the case. The most important part of this will remain and flourish like never before. It's possible that your theories of comfort will be shattered in the ultimate liberation of understanding, but just when we feel we have no grasp, we'll realize we've been holding on to the most solid structure the entire time. There is no reason for this to happen, except that it is. Accept that it is and enjoy yourself. As always, your pleasure remains the priority. Wait, so, okay. First of all... <laughs> That's, what? What the fuck? <coughs> it kind of answers that. And this is a this was a Q and A done where again? This is like his fan site. Like, and this Q &A. is legit. Like that actually was a thing that happened. Like that Q and A session actually is not not like a, a fucking made up thing. No. Yeah, that's real. That really happened, and those are real answers. And uh, despite yeah, it's weird. Uh, despite that weird ass answer, Andrew did actually answer most of the time. It wasn't normally her. It was no, mostly normally uh, Andrew answering the questions. Um, now, not to, because uh, like, like while, while you're looking at that, like my, my, my logical brain immediately says, dude is losing his mind. Like he's having a breakdown. He's, he's pretending he's somebody else. If he's mostly answering the questions as himself and then he has his publicist answering the rest. But then his an that, that answers are like that. Are his answers equally as weird? Like when Yeah, he so well, yeah. So he came back and he started answering questions as well. And here's a screenshot because, like okay. I said, the uh, the website is gone, but I will give you a screenshot here uh, of his answers. And I want to go into this a little bit, uh, which you guys can get this link in the show notes as well. Uh, a lot of this weird. stuff is just weird nonsense. If you guys want to, like, take a second and describe it. It's a lot of numbers, a lot of numbers in parentheses. And then it just says, Andrew, like, Andrew WK at the end. Uh, November 23rd, 2004. November 20th. All, all November 23rd. Uh, why do you want to be 215 pounds? Dear all, this is how the formation begins. First, we were together. So this is actually a, this is actually a little bit before. Uh, it just looks like he. It just sounds like he lost his mind or he was on something. Yeah, it sounds like he partied too hard. Yeah, it sounds he like he this was hard. the origin of partying. And probably, he probably went into rehab, which is why when he came back later in his career, he was like, "Hey, party responsibly." Like I can believe that that is the, <laughs> the process that happened here. Well, there's a little bit of method to the madness. A lot of it is just weird nonsense when you read it, like the stuff that he says in these answers. But a lot of the numerical codes you can see are actually decipherable if you use a simple substitution code, uh, A to 1, B to 2, C to 3, if you know what I mean. Like, okay. Uh-huh. And you can kind of do whatever you want with that because some of it is not crackable even when you use that code. Uh, but there is one piece of information that is important that the article that I read points out, uh, which will be helpful for us to understand later in this, possibly in part two of this episode. Uh, as explained by another website, which we'll have a link to, which is awilkscrier.homestead.com, which you can actually still visit, and is probably the craziest of the of the sites involved in this that I a Wilkes Prior, a Wilkes Crier. It's like his Cry. name, and a Wilkes. I'll give you. I'll give you the link if you want. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to take a look. Uh, there's a colon at the end. That you I love the do. dude who's in, in this screenshot you sent us. The guy, I'm assuming that's like Andrew playing guitar, but the guy dancing looks like he's being shocked by electricity. The dude that is yeah. Andrew WK is the dude right below him with the crazy face. Yeah, yeah, but the picture above it with the guy who just says awk on his shirt, he looks like he's hurt. Like he He's looks getting like, like shredded by the guitar, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know what great. that's about. But yeah, so the, the thing that the thing that I'm going to read from this this Homestead page is which really is like kind of like a rambly, like this person might not be all there kind of website. Oh my God, this website. Yeah, this is like aliens, yeah. basically. A, a simple message would read 1920-5522-139115, which translates into Steve Mike. But uh, important to this is that the word Steve in this is spelled with the E's next to each other and the V at the end. That's like a really key part, okay? Okay. Steve. The two number fives next to each other, 5-5, five, five, which is the E's, was seen again and again in many pieces of code. And it might be worthwhile to note that the 5-5 that the five, five is an indicator in Andrew WK language of the, the entity known as Steve Mike. Okay? You I'll tell entity you, like it could be like a demon. I'll tell you who Steve Mike is in a second, but first, just like burn it into your brains. That's for the audience as well. Burn it into your brains right now. S-T-E-E-V Mike. 55. 
equals 55. Steve Mike. Got it? All right. All right. So now let's get to who the fuck Steve Mike is. So around the same time that all this other shit was going down, uh, another message popped up on Andrew WK's site, which was eventually changed and corrected by people um, as, as time went on. Like, as people kept reposting it and reposting it, uh, it was, like, more and more changed for um, grammar and stuff, like the fucking Star Wars trilogy or something. <laughs> but uh, I found the earliest possible version of it, uh, which was copy-pasted from an authentic-to-the-time forum post. It's from December 21st, 2004. Uh, it's somebody who's posting to an Andrew WK forum that's like, I'm worried about Andrew WK, okay? And he, like, copy-pastes the message as it appeared on the site that day. I'm going to read it to you right now. And it was all caps for some reason. So uh, it's, Dear Andrew WK, to start, let me say that I respect you and our fans very much. You know how much I believe in you and all that you stand for, because I stood for it first. You know how much I love your music, because I created it. It says you, but it's spelled Zao. You know that I love the way you look and act and sing and dance because it was born in my brain. Hopefully by now you've noticed that I've hacked into the websites. Maybe you haven't seen everything, but our fans have. In fact, your fans are well on their way to knowing the truth. I've been giving them bits and pieces, hoping that you'd come to your senses and stop trying to squeeze me out. Well, you haven't responded to my initial requests, and now you're forcing me to make threats. When you... Ooh... When you are unprofessional, when you get unprofessional, so will I. It's uh, badly spelled. Uh, now I have no choice but to let the facts speak for themselves. I never wanted it to come to this, but I can no longer wait in the background and ignore your complete disrespect. You've exploited the automatic disadvantage our agreement puts me in. My choice to let you enjoy the spotlight while I create the magic leaves me all almost helpless. I'm going to extreme measures. Uh, again, with the double E, they like put the M at the end of the word extreme. Uh, but you will not get me to expose myself until I expose you first. I know that the quick rise to fame has clouded your memory concerning our partnership. I was willing to forgive you and your ignorant choices because you're a young star. However, your recent efforts to exclude me from the third album will not be tolerated. I didn't work for the last year on these new songs just to have you break your promises and my heart. Our fans deserve to know the truth. Our fans are smart. That's why I've put the same letter you're holding now on one of the many websites I've created through our company. By the time you read this, our fans will have read it too. Don't worry, I've made it hard for all but the most dedicated fans to read. But know this, more and more people will find out the real story unless you stop trying to sabotage our contract. I've chosen not to go to the press with this, yet I still value our relationship and I want to continue with all that we initially planned. But if you refuse to comply, I will have no choice but to reveal myself and reveal you as a backstabbing fraud. It's your choice, yours truly, Steve Mike. P.S., Unless you want even more people to find out the truth about the music, our agreement, and your new girlfriend, stop with your plans and hold up your end of the deal. Okay. This actually appeared on the homepage of Andrew WK's main website for a, a day or two, maybe less. Nobody knows for sure exactly how long because, you know, 15 years is a long time in the internet uh, and this website doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but almost immediately, it was deleted. What was the this, website? Do you remember? It was Awkworld. Awkward. Uh, there's another one that another one that appeared was Andrew WK sucks. Yeah, that's another website. It uh, doesn't exist anymore either. Here's a here's a here's a uh, link to that forum post if you guys want to see where the guy reposted the uh, reposted the uh, thing. Just to would it be Awkworld.com? Out of curiosity. Yeah. But it, okay. it awkward.com is it doesn't exist. It's like a, yeah, I've just been using the Wayback Machine, seeing if I can grab a picture of it. Yeah, it's 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 been hard. I I I did try to find as much of this as I could. I went into the Wayback Machine a couple times to find some things, but th this was the oldest version of this that I could find. Um, but it got replaced on the website exactly where that crazy letter in all caps was with another letter, uh, very soon after that was not in all caps, and I'm gonna get into that one right now. Dear everyone. I had no idea what was waiting. I got back to my room. I noticed I had changed. Oh, no. Already, I didn't like the sound of that. I immediately went and looked. Right away, I noticed that there was something messed up. I knew something was weird in the section. Then I sank into my stomach. I knew it. You always imagine you. I am this, the me. I can't believe me. Anyway, soon I started finding them. By the way, my manager showed me, and I'm very impressed. I spoke, and the long process of forming cleared everything out. Geez, I just can't believe this actually happened. 
I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe it. This whole Steve Mike thing, I can't even begin. Right now we have solidified. We are the company. This was its insides. That's the only way to the systems. However, there is a small part that thinks it could be someone undisclosed in privacy. I can't even imagine this, but I have. I'm just a witness. You shouldn't see any of this. I talk about blackmail. Please don't believe Steve Mike. I used to call myself Steve Mike a long time ago, and it's nothing now. Someone is trying to confuse you and make me look bad, like a relationship gone bad. Someone is pretending to be me and this Steve Mike guy. I don't understand why people are close. I know you're reading this. Whoever you are will find you. I've made the following decisions. I've now completely removed myself. The music is all that matters for all of us, and that's what I am. I have the best feelings about all of it because I know that it's right. We're stronger now more than ever, and it's only because of one thing. We're still going. Long gone. Sincerely, Andrew WK. Sounds like the man has taken too many drugs. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck Steve Mike is. I have no idea who the fuck he is. And, you know, you're right. At the time, people were talking about maybe he's got some schizophrenia or he's having a psychotic break. And it's pretty consistent with that type of thing. Uh, But there's not enough evidence to say whether it was either of those things or not. Uh, But thankfully, according to an authentic post on another forum from 2004, except this time three days later, we now know that there were also some conspicuous updates made to the official site's FAQ page at the same time. Uh, It said, after sorting through thousands of emails, letters, and phone calls, we've put together a list of the most frequently asked questions related to the recent Andrew WK, Steve Mike, and 121704 concert events. The questions were things like, is Andrew WK dead? No, Andrew WK, in quotes, all caps, is, is alive and well. Who is Steve Mike? Steve Mike is the executive producer and creative director for the Andrew WK albums, I Get Wet and The Wolf. Steve Mike's contributions to Andrew WK Inc. and, quote, Andrew WK personally have proved incredibly effective, and for this reason, Steve Mike has always been well regarded within the organization. Are Steve Mike and Andrew WK the same person? No. Andrew WK, quote, quote, and Steve Mike are not the same person. In the past, Andrew WK, quote, quote, has stated that he used to call himself Steve Mike. However, does this, this does not indicate that they are, in fact, the same individual. Question. Did Steve Mike hack into the Andrew WK websites? Answer. Due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to comment at this time. Question. I have a plan to help save Andrew. How can I get to him? Answer. Andrew WK, quote, quote, appreciates his fans and friends' love and their outpour of devotion and concern. Please be advised that Andrew WK, quote, quote, is not in danger or in need of help in any way, nor does he request the assistance of anyone outside of the immediate company. We encourage you to continue your support for, quote, quote, Andrew WK by participating in the music and all it has to offer. Question, how can I talk to Andrew? How can I meet Andrew? Answer, Andrew WK is well known for his easily accessible personality. At this time, quote, quote, Andrew WK is unavailable. Man, he does look like, uh, so I'm, I'm using the Wayback Machine while you're doing this, and I'm going to Awkward at different points in time. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently sitting in Awkward in um it looks uh 2005 right now july 12 2005 snapshot I'm so in right the, in the middle of this somewhere yeah i'm somewhere in the middle uh just looking at what's going on and he has a q a section you can actually just click on and go to and i just read one of the questions and it's just like i, I again like you said it does come across for <laughs> me at least it comes across like this dude is in the middle of maybe the high of his life like he's he's you know famous and, and touring so he's just doing all the drugs in the world right uh one of the questions is like hey andrew i got another copy of your cd the wolf because my old one was all worn out from overuse i meant to tell you before the wolf is one of the greatest cds ever made um because it never gets old and there isn't one song that i don't like anyway I was just wondering what it is that keeps you so down to earth you really keep it real by the way when you come into montreal and his answer is, dear Dave, I lay on the shoulders the weight. Uh, I lay on your shoulders the weight of this obligation. You must hold it up. There is no way uh, not to prove that you are the entire center of the universe. The orbit of another day is only a rotation of your eyes. Towards the center of your spine, running through a system of sensation, lies the answer to everything you'll ever want to know. Within this wonderful chain, you can witness your birth as the birth of the universe, and through your own devices. You can will into existence every dream and fantasy that you'll ever conceive. The illusion of existence is a thought balanced delicately between the edge of your unconscious and the verge of realization. There is no consequence beyond that which you can uh, can dream and conceive. <laughs> and if you forget to think, an endless black space night will cascade over every sleeping cityscape, never to exist beyond the brainwave. 
Gravity keeps me down to earth and reality keeps me real. These two laws of nature have me figured out. The forces have me pegged. Wear out the wolf over and over again. Roll it around until it's raw. There's plenty more where that came from. Montreal is, indef uh, is indefinitely on our schedule. We love Canada and you know it. Thank you for carrying the load that we can't carry alone. Yours truly, Andrew WK. That answer is interesting. One, because it comes off as banana shit crazy. Uh, but two, and he, he does wraps it up. The, he, he wraps it up pretty, pretty clean. <laughs> he answers the question at least. But he does tickle the idea of that's brought up a lot, not only in obviously alien stuff, but just in a lot of uh, this more paranormal stuff is that reality is subjective to your perception, and that yeah. things are only real when you look at it. He's saying that in the most unnecessarily convoluted way but he's really what he like if you just read what he said he's like uh, you know the brain if you stop thinking the the city escape ceases to exist that i kind of just being like well when if you stop perceiving it does it actually exist right and it's weird and it's unnecessary to answer the i love your cd are you coming to montreal question right uh but it's all of his answers are really bizarre like this and i've been going uh you can go all the way back to 2004 and at different points in time the website actually redirects to a different website that's more official uh which is i don't know if that's a way back machine thing or not but it, it, the website's been around since 02 yeah it's it's been it's been around for a minute uh but yeah as you can imagine like just imagine like he's pretty popular at this time like he's doing yeah yeah 05 he's got to be he's doing pretty good but like everybody who's following him in his like close community is like kind of like feeling probably pretty weirded out at this point and like not a lot of info that's concrete or direct is coming out of him at this time but then randomly he posts an announcement for a new album and it's just like out of nowhere andrew wk is deep in the midst of recording the third full-length album the power never stops forming the new songs are building to an even higher level of power and exaltation Radiance, resplendence, and richness will course through every moment of every flourishing grandstand. Effulgence will surge with each thunderous collapse. The gorgeousness and grandeur of each sweat-dripping, blood-pumping, head-slamming moment of lustrous magnificence will fill our hearts with more strength than ever before. In other words, this is the pure majesty taken to the highest level of celebratory royalty. Binary is banal. But the power never stops forming was never released. And Andrew WK basically disappeared for the entirety of 2005, didn't do anything of note. His wiki says he was trying to be a public speaker during this time, but there's no record of him doing that until almost two years later in November of 2006. Um, and it was around this time in 2005 when he was kind of posting those things like you read, Mike, on the freaking forum. Yeah, on his website, yeah. It was around that this was time. his website. Yeah, this was around the time that the first conspiracy Andrew WK website started to launch. And on, like the ones that we've been looking at and even weirder things like a website called www.louiseharland.com, which also doesn't exist anymore. I'll give you a link for that one. If you want to snoop it, you can put it in the show notes. Let me, uh, let me give you that right now. There's that. Uh, it was billed as the official site of an entity known as the Louise Harland Corporation, which was, quote, a division of Andrew WK Inc. and was, quote, responsible for many areas of operation within Andrew WK Inc. and Andrew WK. There were tons of sites like this. Only a few of them, uh, most of which I've already linked, are still around, still up and running. Uh, but they're uh, all pretty nutty, and they loop everything into the lore. Like, if you go deep into this rabbit hole and you, like, just forget about reality, you, you it loops in everything from, like, the reptilians to Andrew WK being Tom Cruise. Like, for real, that's, like, a large portion of the people who... Follow this or like, yes, and Tom Cruise is now Andrew WK. Uh, in fact, um, some of these things are so out of left field that it almost like discredits the whole theory. You know, it's like almost like at this point, like it's just so crazy. Like, why do we even care? Uh, yeah. but, in, but in July 2006, Andrew WK released his third album, finally. Now it's called Close Calls with Brick Walls, uh, but it only came out in Japan and Korea. And uh, the reason for that was explained by Andrew WK himself uh, like six years later. He said, at the end of 2004, an old friend of mine got into some business trouble and basically decided to take it out on me. To cut a long story short, this person is someone I worked very closely with and had a formal and family business relationship with. Due to various complaints this person had with me, they were able to turn my life and career upside down. I wasn't allowed to use my own name within certain areas of the U.S. entertainment industry and we were in a debate about who owned the rights to my image and who should get credit for inventing it. <clears throat> Which, you know, that type of thing isn't uncommon in the music world. 
uh, except that like the, the specifics of it are pretty weird. And it almost seems to validate all the crazy stuff that we saw earlier. All the like, even though he was talking, you know, nonsense words, a lot of it, yeah. like, you know, in this lucid interview, he like very much lays out a lot of the details that, that are in those letters from Steve Mike and Andrew WK that showed up on the website. You know, I'm looking at his video. I want to see you go wild. Have you seen that video? Which one is that? Uh, the cartoon video, one? I want to see you go wild. Is that the cartoon one? Yeah, it's him in live action, but everything else is a cartoon. Is that the one that has Crazy Steve's, uh, like... Uh, it's the one where he's standing in front of the literal Illuminati symbol? Yeah, that's... A, I, like, literally... <laughs> literally, this is all... Like, this is the type of stuff... Like, when you go into this rabbit hole, this is the type of stuff you find. And this is why there's so many weird websites about this. He's literally saying like it's not even not even a subtle thing. It's just he's literally standing in front of the. It's it looks like our symbol a little bit because the eye is all bloodshot underneath. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. He's just dancing in front of it. Literally, literally, Weird. that's where that's as far as this the conspiracy theory goes is that he's like a social experiment by the Illuminati. But like, I that's, mean, that, that's a lot. That's a theory on under a lot of celebrities, right? Yeah. Like there are a lot. That's of why. Them I, like, that's why I don't give it that much credit. Like as its yeah. own thing. Like I feel like that's not the like one to chase. On yeah, this. for sure. But like, yeah, like that's like where everybody's head is at about this. Where are you at, Jesse? You feel like you've been diving around as as we've been listening. It's weird, right? It is weird. I apparently there was a Steve Mike album purported to be from 1992, but the only thing that people can just, can figure out is that it was discovered in 2006. So it could be a fake created in 2006. Yeah. Uh, but under the Bulb Records uh, label, they're, uh, Andrew WK and Steve Mike are listed. That's where I got Bulb Records is where I got the uh, serial killer, uh, the serial killer uh, <coughs> name story from is one from one of Andrew WK's bios on Bulb Records. But like, yeah, he didn't mention Steve Mike in this like response that he did like six years after the album came out, you know, that I just read. He mm -hmm. didn't mention Steve Mike. <clears throat> but it just sounds a lot like he's talking about Steve Mike there, right? It sounds like it 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 simultaneously has every piece of evidence to to make you believe that it's like dumb bullshit and every piece of evidence to make you believe that there is some sort of legal trouble that he went through. There's also it it seems like a lot of the sources that we have are saying that at many times during his career he mentioned He's not the original one. There was an original Andrew WK and that the it was a character created by committee yeah. and that they hire people to play Andrew WK. As long as they look similar yeah. enough. Yeah. He, I guess. He played a live show on Conan on TBS last year, last April, almost a almost a year exactly on, on April 24th, 2018. Yeah. Uh he played music is worth living for. Uh, it looks like him. There. Looks like him. He looks yeah, young and, as and, hell. And in the end, the and in the end, the reasoning that he gave <coughs> in that interview about why the album never came out in America uh, till much later is not verified. And it's also possible that it's just because he was still way more popular in Asia than he was in America at the time that the album came out. Sure, I would believe that. Or uh, you know, there's a million. There's a, the fact like the subject matter of the album is a lot different. Like maybe they thought the label thought that it wouldn't do well here. So they didn't want to give it a big release. Uh, but uh, the guardian, Chris Campion from the guardian reviewed the album. And uh, here's a quote from that uh, review, just uh, to give you some, you'd be surprised what comes up in this review. WK plays with notions of identity and persona, constructing an increasingly arcane mythology around himself that turns reality inside out. Certainly no other rock star is as odd as WK. He posts lengthy digressions on the benefits of self-monitoring on his MySpace page. His album features photographs of him in starkly unnatural poses bathed in ultraviolet light. At times, he doesn't seem to be himself. This has led fans to chew on conflicting rumors, many of which seem to suggest WK might indeed be a put-on, and that all this confusion has been intentionally sown by someone called Steve Mike, his executive producer, who may or may not be an alter ego of WK himself. It's as if he's rapidly deconstructing himself into the rock star that wasn't there. The only certainty being that this story has not yet run its course. Close Calls is the first in an already announced cycle of records to be released in the next two years. As to what happens next, who knows? 
And honestly, I think the dude is right on the money with that. You know, man, I don't know how far down the the the, the conspiracy hole I, I want to fully believe. But uh, with what we have now, obviously you said this is a two-parter, so we've got a lot to uncover or talk about still. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't put it past because I don't know. I don't know how. Fuck. Fuck. I'm I'm not a Hollywood guy. I don't know how that that industry works beyond you know what i hear about out here would not surprise me if maybe this was a a corporate created person <coughs> a corporate created rock star uh who very like a james bond maybe you know it got so popular they just wanted to keep a similar face young constantly there but because they never came forward and said hey andrew wk is more of a an, uh, a persona than it is anything else it's just you know corporate created persona they keep it to themselves leaving the masses to just go insane with conspiracies because they're not getting the actual truth. And at this point it's gone so off the rails. There's no point in coming forward. Also, this is, it could, also it could be simply that Andrew WK, like many rock himself. stars and many pop stars and many, whatever had his time period in the early two thousands mm -hmm. and it passed. He had one album that everyone listened to. And after that, no one really cared. It was a mo like, Again, going back to the songs, they're all like party hard, ready to die, party, 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 party time. <laughs> like they're all like, they're all, you know, they're not the most creative party, party, songs party. in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so I wonder if he had his moment and then it passed. And like many people who have that, I got attention. They kind of want to keep having attention mm -hmm. and they develop stories and personas and mysteries we see that to a lesser things. extent in our industry yeah and it happens that it's like that one girl uh who was like save me like yes one, oh my yeah. god i forgot about her and then you found out that she was just like doing it yeah she and just people were like want. she didn't help is she crazy and she's like no nah. oh man and, i remember that that was like when we were in uh london the first time and she was like yeah people were like is she, her. she need help is she kidnapped was she taken by and people were like oh my god she was taken by terrorists and, and then in the end she, her family was like no she just needs some help and then even that they were like no it was all just really a thing yeah I, and i wonder also if we look at our our current president uh oh, yeah. when trump was just a new york dude he would call into newspapers and call into radio as other people, literally as like to his talk own himself press up. people. And it would like, be like just uh, a really crappy Trump's voice. Trump's a pretty cool guy, huh? Yeah, he'd be yeah. like, oh, Trump can get all the ladies. And people Trump, would like. Trump uh, does really well as China. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and, China. And he would do that. There was actual video and recording of him doing that, of literally just BSing his way. And, and it creates an image. And obviously it works because yeah. here we are talking about Andrew WK of stuff we know nothing, right? So yeah. it, it it could very well be that as well. It could be this is all created to keep him in the ethos. Yeah, and I think and I think that's exactly where I think all our heads should be at right now in this in the timeline. Uh, oh because my God. are you about to really <laughs> take it to the next level? Is this is this, this what you do, man? Alex. Part one, part one, lay the foundation. To Alex, make it feel what? Like I told staying. you it's a two part end, episode. By the end, if by the end you're like. <laughs> Andrew WK <laughs> is a time traveling alien. Is a time me. traveling alien? What if, what if I was like, I'm Andrew WK. And I, the mask off. <laughs> I would be like, when it's time to party, we will party hard. I'd what be if, over at your house, but like, safely. <laughs> but safely. We what party if you safely. saw me in the Zoom chat window and I like backed up and like a band was there and I just started. Playing. You just started be, jamming. Yeah. That was the is greatest like, episode in the history of episodes. Yeah. The whole amazing. podcast is a ruse yeah. to, to relaunch Andrew WK yeah. into the conscious mind. So fast forward to April 2007. Okay. Uh, you know, I said he was transitioning into doing this public speaking thing. Uh, he did, uh, the first thing he did was in November 2006, like I said, at NYU. But then he did a similar series in April and those months uh, on the West Coast. He was at a venue called Chop Suey in Seattle. Uh, and this guy, Eric Grandy, who is a writer for The Stranger, which is the Seattle newspaper, uh, unaware of the show in New Jersey uh, that happened three years, uh, three years earlier, made a blog post uh, about the, about the uh, show. He said, then there was Andrew W.K. What a fucking disaster. After clearing the stage, his DJ plays some flange and delayed introductory message about Andrew W.K.'s party tour or something over a bizarrely Euro trance backing track. After a false start, Andrew W.K. emerged dressed all in white, beer in hand, and banged out some chords on a keyboard. 
He got on the mic and greeted the crowd, said some obligatory nonsense about partying, and then stuffed the mic in his pants to play some more keyboards. This sounds fine now, but there was something off about it at the time. I had been expecting overwhelmingly sincere enthusiasm from the man, but instead got half-hearted, almost smirking condescension. WK barely performed an actual song, and his every gesture, expression, and word felt like a joke. We Want Fun's lyrics seem to be take on an entirely sarcastic tone. And maybe it's just phase two of some great Andrew WK joke that I don't know the punchline to. There's plenty to suggest a certain level of self-aware pranksterism behind the man, the Steve Mike hoax marketing scheme, the contrived positivism, the affiliation with misanthropic noise bands. And maybe I'm wrong because some of the crowd didn't seem too displeased, although it seemed like a lot of people left. Or maybe I would it would have seemed totally different with the live band backing him, but the handful of people that I knew were there just for Andrew WK left feeling pretty disappointed. Also, completely unrelated, Andrew WK lost so much weight that he looks like a different person. It's weird. Well, he does shove the mic in his pants in the Conan show in 2018 and plays the keyboard. So Same behavior. Thing. But that might be one of the things they teach you at Andrew WK school when you become you indoctrinated. You got to shove the mic in your pants and jam out on the keyboard yeah. in the first minute. And that would be a fine thing to read on its own. It's not that... Yeah, yeah, it just you know, seems like somebody who didn't really yeah. enjoy his performance. Except for the fact that in that same post of that review on the website, which has been up for about 12 years now, thanks to the archive.com or archive.org Wayback Machine, there's a comment that the article notes probably less than 100 people have ever looked at before. Uh, it exists uh, in the comment section of this blog post, and it's from someone who is called, Who is Steve Mike? Who is, who is Mike Steve? I know which the author of this article said he bets on his life. He bets this post was written by Andrew WK himself. The truth will make you sad. Mike Steve is AWK. AWK is Steve Mike and vice versa. The whole Steve Mike created Andrew concept, the website hacking, the actor angle, the Andrew WK Inc. conspiracy, Louise Harland, etc. All were designed and orchestrated by Andrew and his management company as a bit of a social experiment and a way of keeping the fan base wondering about it all during his relative absence from the spotlight. The wealth of information available, evidence to the contrary, etc. 35-45% to 45 of it was pre-written and planted in the correct places. The rest of it simply boils down to overzealous fans coming up with their own scenarios right. and passing them along to other fans. After passing those scenarios along, they have a tendency to take on a life of their own, which is exactly what it was hoped for by all involved. Originally, the idea was to draw the Andrew-Steve Mike confusion out even further into different channels, but it's been mostly abandoned to the hands of the fan base at this point, who are keeping it alive on their own quite nicely. It's my understanding that there were at least five or six other scenarios in the works for future developments at one point, possibly more, one of which would expand on the theory that Andrew WK has a split personality identified as Steve Mike, who, did, who stood for the polar opposite of everything Andrew did, darkness, despair, isolation, etc., and that the two of them would have a so-called battle for control over the identity. As absurd as it may sound, it was an idea on the table. A lot of people have had their hand involved in the creation of these storylines. In regard to the various actors play a rock star named Andrew Angle, there was and is a kernel of truth to that. Several lookalikes were brought aboard at various times to make appearances in order to lend credibility to the ongoing internet rumors that Andrew wasn't real. This was also a benefit to the real Andrew, who could as a result focus on his other responsibilities and obligations, ergo be in many places at once. Andrew is a legitimate artist who was discovered in early 2000 and got a huge media push as Island Def Jam really believed in him and was hoping to push him as the man who saved rock and roll. The Steve Mike angle was originally intended to be a part of that. It was wildly successful in some regards, but didn't quite achieve the exact results they were all hoping for, which unfortunately I'm not exactly aware of. Hence the abandonment of the Steve Mike project. The possibility does exist that Steve Mike may make future appearances slash threats of outing Andrew or things of that nature. Uh, depending on whether or not it appears feasible and the desired results may be met by the media and the general public, that's all. Hope it helps for anybody still confused on the subject. So they were like attempting Blair Witch viral marketing. Well, you have to remember basically. that this is just a comment on a blog post true, that is true, in true, no true. way verified. But that's another element of this. And again, you can say it's just a theory or whatever. But to end part one of this two-part episode uh, of this ever widening gyre if you will <laughs> here's another quote from a very strange london version of one of these public speaking tours which by the way I, if i didn't make it clear what they were he like went by himself played some songs on piano along with a backing track and then like talked to the audience for a really long time that's what they are huh weird yeah 
Uh, he did this really weird version of it in London, uh, which appears to completely corroborate that comment. Uh, even though, uh, strangely, I was unable to find a single video of it anywhere online anymore, even though they did exist at one point. I want to confess something to all of you. I'm not actually Andrew WK. I'm not. I'm not the same guy that you may have seen from the I Get Wet album. I'm not that same person, and I don't just mean that in a philosophical or conceptual way. It's not the same person at all. Do I look the same as that person? What I mean is that since that time, I have changed. And for any of you that happened to be there during that time, perhaps you have changed as well. And I would like to think that we're not the same people at all. And again, not just conceptually, but very literally, we're not the same. I'm a completely different entity. Not to discredit what I've done before or what Andrew WK has done before, whoever that person was. And so I'm here in that spirit. And I think that freedom is sort of hand in hand with the idea of joy and songs like Party Hard that Andrew WK has done, songs like I Get Wet or Party Till You Puke or Totally Stupid or whatever songs that have appealed to you, that Andrew WK has presented, I'm here in the name of that joy, but I'm not Andrew WK as far as that goes. Andrew WK was created by a large group of people. They met and I was there and we talked about how we could come up with something that would move people. It was done in the spirit of commerce. It was done in the spirit of entertainment, which usually goes hand in hand with commerce. I was auditioned alongside many other people to fill this role of a great frontman, a great performer. On the one hand, it may be a little scary to admit this to you all, that I may not be exactly who you thought I was, and that the guy who was, in fact, first hired as Andrew WK is a different person than the guy sitting here on the stage tonight. I'm the next person who is playing Andrew WK. But doesn't it seem a little too crazy? Uh, it seems like... But does, doesn't that seem like Lonely Girl 15? Yes, it seems it seems like it also could be an out of context statement like you know when people are like that wasn't me really drugged out and they say stuff that it it, it does like, it comes ac it comes across like somebody read a f f uh, philosophy 101 book on like where he's like drugs. my cells aren't the same cells that I was yeah, before man and I've grown so I'm not ship, really me what's a ship comparison that that philosophy ship where like the sh it's you, an old like, ship every that just piece gets updated you replace, and yeah. its planks get replored replaced over the course of years and then 10 years later can you really say it's the same exact ship it, that's it's the, the idea exact of same thing as when my friend steve when we were back in high school steve what really, really high steve what up at the moon steve mike not steve mike he stared up at the moon and he said and i quote dude the moon has a purpose it's that kind of thing we're like he's <laughs> not wrong but like he said it with such passion and like Dude? It meant something to him, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think this is that. I don't know, but I don't know. If this reads as I am a different human being, rather I think that's than very intentional. I am a druggie <coughs> who like has a moment of of weird clarity in my drug use. From like, I'm not the person who made that other album. I'm a different person. I will never be that person again. That person was by committee. I'm not by committee. What I'm doing now is for me. But he said it in like a really messed up kind of way. But I think in it's, a way I think that it's also not, could be. I think it's not clear. I think it's like supposed to be yes, like both. It could also be open yeah. to interpretation. Yeah. It, it, it sounds like he's saying I literally am not the same person and that I was hired to play Andrew WK. But it could just be like a poem about how you're not the same as you used right. to be when you're young. I'm very interested in what part two, how part two is going to take us off the rails. Yeah, it goes. It still feels like we're on a track. Like it still feels like it's very corporate. It's very uh, crafted in a boardroom and maybe it just got out of hand. And like you, like you said, like uh, the, the, the fans took it into their own hands and just went nuts with it. Like that's all very believable because we've seen shit like that happen. Yeah. Do me a favor though, you guys, and also internet don't look into this till part two comes out. Deal. You know, don't it, I don't it spoil myself. it for yourself. Let me just let me just take you on the let ride. me just take you on a journey. Because man, it 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 it's crazy. I and I I don't have an answer. You know, like it's not like a mystery solved. Like that would be amazing if I like was the first guy ever to solve this, and that was what it meant to do an episode on this. But like, <laughs> I I I have no idea what the truth is myself still. But I there is a lot more that we can get into here. And obviously I think the next episode will be a little shorter than this one, but it's, uh, it's going to be another, an, a whole, like think about how many times your mind changed during this hour about what the well, truth just, was. Yeah. It, it felt like I had a, at the very beginning, it was like endless possibilities, but it does feel like you narrowed it down. Yeah. I, you know, you I'm narrowing it down. it down to one question, but that's the best I can do. But like, I just don't know. I, I, I don't know. And I, I think this is, I think this is great regardless of what, 
uh, the truth is. I think this is like such an interesting mystery and I'm so glad that it exists. Yeah, this is, I'm definitely in. Like, uh, this is cool. Even if, like you said, we're not going to get an answer. Uh, I mean, you, you like I will give you enough to, to decide what you think. I think. I think I will give you enough information to decide what you believe to be the truth. But I can't, like, prove it. Well, the fact that I can weigh back it and then look at his answers and they were still equally insane. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's still, obviously, in the early 2000s, he was, at the very least, even if he was real, was maybe partying too hard. Yeah. I, I agree. He might have been partying till he puked. Um, <laughs> but also, just before we leave, uh, just please remember this guy's real. He exists. Don't bother him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, please. Listeners, please don't, like, bother him about this. Don't. I don't want him to, like, have negativity from the Chiluminati. You know, this could be a thing about him being addicted to drugs or him having mental illness. So please just, you know, I don't care what you do, but just, you know, be respectful of that. I, right? Angry letters could to the It could also just be, like, an artist trying to do artsy stuff. Yeah. It could like, be anything. It could be that simple that everything he does is trying to take it to a new level and do a new thing. Did you like, just get really impressed? Could be. Did you just like color yourself impressed by Andrew WK? Do you feel like, do you feel like he's deeper than you thought at the beginning of today? Like what your idea of him was before? Or do you think he's like a more complex artist now? I don't think I, I ever had an opinion other than like, when it's time to party, we will party hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like true. That's, and if you I, haven't I, heard his music, you guys should, because I bet you it doesn't sound like, you, like you'd think. I need to go listen yeah. now. Oh, yeah, I will be is, listening now. Very, very angsty, but very upbeat. Yeah, and he's also super like, good at piano, which is a surprise. Is he Most of the time like, when he plays live, he plays the piano. Yeah. Is he basically the the, the end remnants of like the 90s grunge? He's like, no. that's how he looks. He's no. like the no. beginning. He's like the beginning of like, the like two thousands like punk strokes, white stripes, the hives. Okay, cool. He was cool, like part cool. of that right. wave. Like the vines. Wow, I wouldn't that. even go that I wouldn't even say that. It's, it's like, like his own create it's weird. Yeah, it's He's his own thing. It's not quite that, but it like kinda like rides that wave of like rock it's is back. High energy, like very metal fast. punk, happy. It sounds like Anamataguchi or something, actually. Like it sounds like super like Caro Caro. Yeah. I'll definitely listen now for sure. Before next episode, especially so. Yeah, but uh, well, Alex, what do we what do we got to what do we got to say to the people? Thank you, as always. We are uh, still creeping up towards that one thousand five star review on iTunes, so uh, we'll chill that. Go check that out. And always, uh, our dope temporary limited time hoodies. We have two weeks left. Go get. One. I love how you're updating the uh, number of likes that we're going for, like reviews on iTunes, like a like yeah. A, you gotta hit the benchmarks, man. Yeah, it's like a first it's like an achievement on like World of Warcraft or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've been That's playing a lot of grind. Thing. I've been playing a lot yeah, of grind. It's like it's exactly like that. It's like well, it's important on iTunes because they have some like bizarre. From what I've been able to under to read, but not get numbers from because Apple doesn't release it. Is like they're likely going to push you after you reach a very arbitrary milestone of, of reviews and then you'll start seeing yourself on like the the, the top popular page. new releases and all that other nonsense well so, like, if we gotta, can get there you gotta guys, play the you gotta play the apple itunes algorithm game we want to we want to go do live shows all around the country just as much as you dope. want us to guys but we can't do that until we're famous and powerful okay and we have money so help us help us get famous and powerful and we will take over the country the with you we'll have our, our body replacements when we get too old to yeah. do this anymore we'll get Andrew WK to open for us. <laughs> that would be awesome. I would love we to get have Andrew him on. Andrew WK to open, and we get Zach Baggins to host. I would love to have him on as a guest, but I don't want to have him on and ask him about his own mystery. I would love to just have him on. So, Steve. I just want to ask him about, like, I just want to have him on and talk about aliens or something. I would, that would be great. That would be great. I would love it. Other than that, I don't know if there's anything else for us to shill. Get our hoodies. Andrew WK, listen to his music. And uh, throw us good reviews on wherever you listen to us. And we'll be back with part two. What? Very, very Why soon. are you laughing? I don't know what you guys said for the last minute and a half. I've been listening to Andrew WK party hard. <laughs> when it's time to party, we will always party out. hard. Like, when it's time to party, we will party hard. <laughs> We're just chilling, so don't worry about it. Oh, man. Anyway, I forgot how good of a song this is. It's a great song. It's super they, fun. They, those first two records are like really just unimpeachable. There's nothing bad about them at all. We'll Except for the, you know. Them. The lyrics <laughs> they're like party, we will party and we're party Dude, hard. No, so listen what closer. You they're sad. That it could be corporate. Listen, is, listen is. closer. They're sad. They're sad lyrics. They're sad lyrics. Yeah. This is my judgment day. Just you, you know what? I'm gonna just let you guys do it. I'm not gonna sing anymore. Andrew I am. WK. I'm going to listen. I, I promise. I I'm bet you his tonight. voice doesn't sound how you imagined it. 
more than anything. Because he sounds right. like a metal... Whatever. You'll, you'll, you'll get into it. You'll get into it. Guys, <laughs> If you guys want to tweet you. at us, you can do so. Uh, Alex is at Fasciani A. Jesse's at Jesse Cox. And I am at Mathis Games. And obviously, Chiluminati Pod for the podcast in general. We've had some really cool fan art recently. So thank you for that. Yeah, everybody's doing talented. those like cool... like poster type like the kind like, of stuff they do for like a serial killer show like i yeah. i love that that's like the type of fan art that we're getting more yeah, more antlers and, and like milky rays of light please <laughs> i love it it's great uh other than that i think that's it we'll be back with a part two uh, courtesy of alex and we'll learn more about the world of andrew wk thanks for listening everybody peace out goodbye do it you like it you like what we do what is such a party we <laughs> Ding, 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 ding.